Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. I'll also be sharing an easy and delicious dessert recipe with you. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I really needed something easy. We had just gotten my mom home from the hospital and settled and back home. So I just looked in the freezer to see what we had. We had some of this popcorn shrimp that I got at Kroger. So I just decided to cook it in the air fryer. We had a little bit of these crinkle cut fries that I got from Aldi. So I'm going to cook those in the air fryer as well. And then usually when I make popcorn shrimp, we either just have ketchup with it. Sometimes my husband will have cocktail sauce or tartar sauce, but I'd seen somewhere on Instagram I don't remember where and I didn't save it so I apologize I can't give credit to it but somebody dipped their like fried shrimp in a mixture of mayonnaise and sweet chili sauce that sounded good so I'm going to mix together some mayonnaise and sweet chili sauce all right here are the um, fries and the popcorn shrimp like I said I just cooked these in the air fryer and then here are the plates really easy but dinner hit the spot and it was nice to just have something in the freezer that I could just throw together The next day was Labor Day and we had plans to have my family over and like grill ribs and hot dogs and stuff like that. But um, we figured it would be best for everyone to just kind of stay home and rest and do something a little more low key, uh, which is totally fine. I'll take that over mom being sick <laughs> any day. Um, but I still wanted to make a couple of the things that I was going to make um, because I had all the ingredients. So first up, I decided to try a new recipe for coleslaw. So let me show you how I made that. So first in this bowl, I'm going to mix up my mayonnaise, buttermilk, sugar, lemon juice, vinegar, salt and pepper, and I'm gonna stir that until it's combined really well. And while I do that, a couple notes on this recipe. So first, this is from one of my subscribers, Donna. If you saw last week's What's for Dinner video, we um, tried Donna's recipe for grilled corn and potato salad, and it was so delicious. Um, and this is another one of Donna's recipes. So I highly recommend you all give this a try. With coleslaw, I am very, very particular about coleslaw. I didn't even like it until I was an adult. And even as an adult, um, I don't tend to order it out or eat it out a lot because I am pretty particular about it. Um, but we really enjoyed this recipe. So I recommend you all give this a try. So once all of the sauce ingredients are stirred together, we're going to add in some grated onion, shredded carrots, and chopped cabbage. Now, once we have added that, we're going to stir it until it's combined really well cover this and then place this into the refrigerator. You want to do this for at least a couple hours. Kind of the longer that it sets, the better it will be. And like I said, we were going to do ribs and grill out, but I just did not feel like it. So we decided just to cook some hot dogs for my husband and I, and I cooked them in the air fryer. I believe I cooked them at 390 degrees for about three minutes. Just watch them and, you know, make sure they don't like explode in, in the air fryer. All right. So here is that finished coleslaw. And I think I forgot to mention, but I'll have Donna's recipe linked down below. Next, I made a ranch potato salad. I could have swore I filmed me making this. I don't know what happened to it. I apologize, but it's super easy and it's like my favorite potato salad recipe. All I did was cook up some red potatoes. It's perfect because you don't even have to peel them. Cooked them until they were tender in some salted water. Drain them and then you combine them with ranch dressing. I like to use the homemade, use your favorite bottled, some cooked bacon, green onions, shredded cheese, and that's it. Just stir it. You can eat it right away or place it in the refrigerator and eat it, um, you know, whenever you're ready for it. And then we've got some hot dog buns and some ketchup, mustard, and relish for our hot dogs. Here are the plates. So we've got some of the potato salad, the coleslaw, and then the hot dogs. For my hot dogs, I just most of the time eat ketchup on it. Sometimes I'll put a little mustard, but I usually just stick to just ketchup and then my husband likes ketchup mustard and relish he would also probably enjoy some sauerkraut on his hot dog but I don't believe I had any on this day but anyway this was dinner this night easy and delicious Next, I'm going to share a dessert with you. And quick side note, I don't normally share desserts in my What's for Dinner videos, number one, because I don't really make desserts that often unless it's, you know, a holiday or special occasion like this is Labor Day. Um, but two, usually I'll put it in a separate video because I guess I just assume that 
people who are watching a what's for dinner video want to stick to what's for dinner. Um, but let me know down in the comments down below if you would prefer them to be in a separate video if I do share a dessert recipe or if you don't mind it in a what's for dinner video. But anyway, I've had this recipe pinned for a while. It's a Twinkie cake. My husband likes Twinkies. He loves them. Um, and so when I saw this on Pinterest, I thought he would enjoy this and it just looks super easy. So let me show you the ingredients that we're going to use. So first we of course need Twinkies for the Twinkie cake and this is a great no bake dessert. So if you're someone who needs a dessert but either doesn't want to bake or has a hard time baking, I think this would be perfect. We're going to use some bananas, some chopped nuts. You could use pecans. I have walnuts here. That's my preference. I've got some vanilla pudding mix, some Cool Whip, some crushed pineapple, maraschino cherries, and then milk. I'm going to start out by putting together the pudding mixture. So to my bowl, I'm adding my vanilla pudding and make sure you get the instant pudding, not the cook. To that, I'm gonna add in the milk, whisk that together and then set that to the side and it'll thicken up while we start to assemble the cake. And a quick note here, I did have the recipe. I didn't want a whole nine by 13 just for my husband and I. So to the bottom of your serving dish, we are going to add the Twinkies. You're just going to take the Twinkie, remove it from the package, slice it in half lengthwise, and then add a layer to the bottom of your serving dish. Next, we're going to add on a layer of our bananas, and then we're going to take our crushed pineapple. You want to drain this really, really well. Once it's drained, we're going to add a layer of that over the bananas. Then I'm going to add a layer of pudding and then the thawed Cool Whip, or in my case, I'm using the Kroger brand whip topping. I'm going to spread that out and then to garnish it, I mean, really, you don't have to garnish it at all. The recipe suggested adding some chopped nuts. Like I said, I'm using walnuts. You could, of course, skip the nuts. Um, and then we are going to add the cherries on top. This recipe made a suggestion, which I'd never tried before, but it, it's kind of like, duh, why haven't I tried that before? Is to drain the cherries on a paper towel before you add them to the cake, just so they don't drain onto the cake. So I'm gonna add those and then that's it. You could eat this right away. I would suggest though covering it and placing it into the refrigerator and allowing it to chill for an hour or two before you serve it. And this was a tasty little dessert. I've mentioned before on my channel, I am not a big sweets person. And if I do have something sweet, I prefer like a fruit-based dessert and like my favorite dessert of all time, I, it would be really a tie between banana pudding and a banana split cake, which I've shared that recipe before on my channel. I'll link it down below. And this Twinkie cake was like exactly like the banana split cake. It reminded me so much of it, um, but it was even easier because I didn't have to make a crust or anything like that. So like I said, if you're looking for a crowd-pleasing, super easy dessert, I recommend you all give this a try. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for Moroccan chicken and rice. Now, I've never had any um, sort of Moroccan food before, let alone make it. I think I mentioned in my last What's for Dinner video, or maybe it was my grocery haul. Um, but anyway, I'm trying to try new cuisines and try new dishes that I've never made before and that I've never had before. And I saw this Moroccan chicken and rice recipe on Pinterest and it looked easy and delicious. So I decided to give it a try. I'll have the recipe, of course, linked in the description box below. Here are the ingredients that we're going to need for the marinade for the chicken. We've got some pepper, minced garlic, olive oil, turmeric, cumin, coriander, oregano, salt, some chicken stock, lemon juice, and then I've got some chicken thighs here. Now you could use boneless skinless if you'd like. I just have um, bone in skin on, but again, just use your preference. So we're gonna stir all of that until it's combined really well and then place the marinade ingredients along with the chicken into a Ziploc bag and place this into the refrigerator and you wanna allow this to marinate at least for a couple hours. I found a recipe for Moroccan carrots, so I decided to make that to go on the side. I'll have the recipe linked down below. Here are the ingredients that we're going to use. We've got some ginger, cinnamon, cumin, smoked paprika, olive oil, cayenne pepper, turmeric, salt, and carrots. And what I'm going to do is peel the carrots, slice them on the diagonal, and then I place those into a bowl going to drizzle them with olive oil. And then in this small bowl, I just mixed up all of the spices. I'm going to toss the carrots with the spices, lay them out on a cookie sheet. 
I've got some oil in my skillet and it's preheating over about medium high heat. Once it's hot, I'm going to add in my chicken thighs and sear them for a couple minutes on both sides. You don't need to worry about cooking them through at this point. And back to the carrots real quick. So I had the oven preheating to 350 degrees to cook the chicken. I believe the carrot recipe said to cook it at a higher temperature. Um, but I just went ahead and put the carrots in while I was cooking the chicken to give them a head start. With me cooking it at a lower temperature, I knew it was going to take longer for the carrots to cook. So once I've got the chicken thighs seared, I'm going to add in my chicken stock, cover that with a lid, turn the heat down to about medium, and cook the chicken for about 10 minutes or so. At this point, I'm going to remove the chicken to a plate and set that to the side. Now, the recipe said at this point to add the remaining oil. I didn't feel like it needed any oil, so I skipped that. I'm going to add in my diced onions, give that a stir, and allow that to cook for a minute or two until they start to soften. Once they start to soften, I'm going to add in my garlic as well as the turmeric and coriander. Stir that and cook that until the onions are soft. And a quick note, I would recommend using a skillet that is oven safe, like a cast iron skillet or these caraway pans are also oven safe. Um, if you don't have an oven safe skillet, no worries. But once you get it to the point of putting it in the oven, you just want to transfer it to an oven safe dish, of course. So I am going to add in the rice, cook that for a couple minutes until the rice starts to brown, and then add in the chicken stock, give that a stir. We're going to set the chicken thighs on top of the rice, cover this with the lid, and then this is going to go into the preheated oven. And we're going to bake this for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the rice is tender and the chicken is cooked until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Here's the chicken and rice once it was done. And at this point, I'm gonna fluff the rice with a fork and it'll be ready to serve. Here are the finished carrots. And like I said, because these cooked at a lower temperature, I think it took about 40 minutes for them to get tender. The recipe suggested garnishing these with some za'atar. You don't have to do that. I just happened to have it on hand. So I sprinkled a little za'atar um, on the carrots once they were done and gave them a toss. All right, here is the plate. So I just laid down some of the rice, added a chicken thigh. The recipe suggested to garnish it with cilantro, lime wedges, and Greek yogurt. Now, I'm not usually a fan of Greek yogurt, um, but I went ahead and gave it a try because, like I said, I'm trying to expand my culinary horizons. And you never really know if you like something unless you try it. So I tried it with some of the Greek yogurt. And once I, like, mixed the yogurt, I got a bite of the yogurt, the chicken, the rice, it was actually pretty tasty, so I would recommend you give that a try. And then we have the carrots, and this was such a delicious dinner. I will definitely make this again. This was so tasty. The rice and the chicken had such great flavor. The carrots were yummy. Delicious. For dinner the next night, I tried two new recipes. For the entree, we've got a tequila lime chicken club. And for the side dish, I tried a Mexican macaroni salad. I have both the recipes linked down below. I'm going to get started with the macaroni salad. Let me show you how I made it. To my bowl, I'm going to add in my cooked pasta. I have some elbow macaroni. I cooked this in some salted water according to the package instructions and drained it. You could use whatever shape of pasta you prefer. Next, I'm going to add in my corn. I didn't have any plain canned corn downstairs, and I didn't feel like going upstairs to get it, but I did have a can of Mexi corn, so I just decided to use that. I drained it. I'm going to add that. Next, I'm going to add in some bell pepper. You can use green if you prefer it. I don't love green bell pepper, so I'm going to use red. Then I added chopped cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, just leave it out. Next, I added some chopped pickled jalapenos. Then I'm going to add some diced cheese. I, in the various recipes I saw for this, I saw all kinds of cheese. Use whatever you like or prefer. I am just using some mozzarella. Next, I'm going to add in some shredded carrots, and then we're going to add in some ham. Um, instead of buying the cubed ham that's you know already cut up for you, I find it cheaper to get a ham steak and cut it up myself, but you can do whatever your preference is. I'm going to stir that until it's combined. Now we're going to add in the mayonnaise, the Mexican crema, some salt and pepper to taste. We're going to give this a stir, combine it really well, and then this is going to get covered and go into the refrigerator. You could eat this right away, but anytime I make macaroni salad, pasta salad, or potato salad, I like to let it chill just to kind of let the flavors come together. 
Now for the tequila lime chicken club, we're gonna marinate the chicken and I marinated it for just about an hour. Here are the ingredients we're gonna use. We've got some chopped cilantro, fresh lime juice, chipotles and adobo, some minced garlic, salt, and then of course we need tequila for the tequila lime chicken. Now I mentioned before on my channel, we're just personally not alcohol drinkers. So I have this zero proof tequila, um, tastes exactly like tequila, just without the alcohol. So that's what I'm gonna use. You can of course use your preference. So all I'm gonna do is stir everything until it's combined really well, place the marinade along with some thinly sliced chicken breasts into a Ziploc bag. And like I said, I just marinated it for about an hour. While the chicken's marinating, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the chipotle mayonnaise. Really easy, just two ingredients. We've got some chipotles and adobo, some mayonnaise. I'm gonna stir that until it's combined really well, place the lid on that and put it into the fridge while the chicken is getting all happy. For the chicken, you could grill this, cook it in the oven, the air fryer, however you want. I decided just to do it in a skillet um, on top of the stove, cooked it in a little bit of oil. Because the chicken cutlets were so thin, it took just a couple minutes per side. You wanna cook the chicken until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Once it was almost done, I'm gonna add my cheese. Use whatever cheese you prefer. I've got some sliced provolone on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. Here's the finished macaroni salad. And then here are the finished plates. So I've got some of the salad. Now to assemble the sandwiches, I took some hamburger buns, just toasted them in a skillet. I added some of that chipotle mayonnaise that we made along with the chicken and the melted cheese. We've also got some lettuce, tomato, and then some cooked bacon. And y'all, these sandwiches were delicious. They were so good. We will absolutely make this again. There was such great flavor in it. Now, it did have a little bit of a kick because of the chipotles and the chipotle mayonnaise. You can, of course, cut back on the chipotles, use less, um, it, you know, if you're kind of sensitive to spice. But these were so, so good. I mentioned in a what's for dinner video a while back that my husband Gary doesn't love salmon. I mean, he'll eat it if I make it. He just doesn't love it. And one of my subscribers named Christy sent me this recipe. She said that her family really enjoys it. So I thought it couldn't hurt to give it a try. It's a sweet and spicy glazed salmon. I'll have the recipe linked down below. This was so delicious. We both really enjoyed this. My husband asked for seconds and asked that I make this again, which like has never happened in the history of me making any anything salmon. <laughs> um, so that's a huge compliment. So Christy, thank you so much for sending this to us. And I recommend you all give this a try. This took like no time at all. And it was a handful of ingredients. Let me show you how I made it. So for the glaze for the salmon, it's just four ingredients. First, we're gonna need some soy sauce. I prefer to use the reduced sodium, use your preference. We've got some rice vinegar, Chinese hot mustard, and brown sugar. I'm going to stir everything into a small saucepan and then bring this to a boil. Once it's at a boil, we're going to turn the uh, heat off, set it to the side, and then allow that to just cool slightly while we get the fish prepared. For one of the sides, I made some mashed sweet potatoes. Really simple, just took the sweet potatoes, washed them really well, peeled them, cut them into chunks, placed them in some water, brought them to a boil and boiled them for about 20 minutes or so until they were tender. I drained them really well, added them back to the pot and mashed them with a little bit of butter, milk, a little tiny touch of salt and some brown sugar. For my other side dish, I tried a new recipe for roasted bok choy. Now, I've made bok choy, I think, one other time, but it's been years since I made it. Um, and that's a tip for you. If you know, I know sometimes with dinner, we can get stuck in a rut making the same old things over and over and over again. Um, but we don't have to do anything drastic. Just try a new vegetable, try a new protein, try a new method of cooking or a new spice, um, you know, just to kind of switch things up a little bit. So for the bok choy, and if you're not familiar with bok choy, it is a Chinese cabbage. Um, all I'm going to do is separate the leaves, wash them really well, dry them, and then slice up like the stalks and then chop up the green parts. To season up the bok choy, we're going to use a little bit of oil, some minced garlic, soy sauce, sesame oil, 
grated ginger, and then the recipe that I was using said to use chili flakes, but I decided to grab some sriracha while I was in the fridge grabbing out like the soy sauce and everything. So I'm going to toss the ingredients uh, for the like sauce with the bok choy. I placed that onto a foil lined cookie sheet just to make cleanup easier. I placed this into an oven that was preheated at 425 degrees and baked it for about 10 minutes and I tossed it halfway through. For the salmon, I've got my fillets on a cookie sheet that I lined with aluminum foil sprayed with a little bit of cooking spray. I would recommend you definitely line in your cookie sheet with the foil. Um, we're going to put the glaze on it and that glaze has sugar in it. So just to make the cleanup easier, we're going to season the salmon simply with some salt and pepper on both sides. And then this is going to go into the preheated oven again, set at 425. We're going to bake this salmon for about seven to 10 minutes. Really just depends on how thick your salmon is and how you like it cooked if you like it more on the like medium, medium rare, or well done. To finish up the salmon, we're going to brush on some of that glaze we made earlier and then place this under the broiler for just a minute or two. And then that's it. Here are the finished plates. So we've got the sweet potatoes, the salmon. I just garnished it with some chopped green onions and then the bok choy. I added a sprinkle of sesame seeds. And like I said, this was delicious. My husband loved this. I loved it too. Everything was so good. The sweet potatoes, the bok choy, the salmon, absolutely delicious. For dinner the next night, we were going to go out to eat for like a little date night, but I just did not feel like it and did not feel like going anywhere. So we decided to just stay in, watch some TV and just kind of chill. Um, but like I said, because we were planning on going out to eat, we discussed ordering takeout and my husband really, really wanted some pad thai. So we ordered pad thai and him a Philadelphia roll from a local restaurant. But y'all, I just could not like... I was in one of the mo those moods where like nothing sounded good. The only thing that sounded good to me, and this is so weird, is like cheesy tuna casserole. I have no idea why that sounded so good. Um, but like I said, out of everything I could order, that's the only thing that sounded good. So I ordered him the takeout. And then for myself, I had a box of this um, tuna helper, well, the Walmart version anyway, and some tuna in my pantry. So I just cooked it up according to the package instructions. And at the last minute, added in some frozen peas and that was my dinner this night and you know nothing fancy just super low-key but we had a nice time together just eating dinner and watching tv For the last dinner in this week's video, I tried yet another new recipe. This is from The Plain Chicken. I'll have it linked down in the description box below. This is for a Mexican chicken casserole. So to get started, I have the oven preheating to 350 degrees. I'm going to spray a casserole dish. Quick note, I did have the recipe. So to a bowl, I'm going to add in some cooked chicken, taco seasoning, sour cream, and I added a touch of Mexican crema because I didn't have quite enough sour cream black beans, some rotel, corn, shredded cheese, and then the recipe said to use cream of chicken soup, but I found this cream of jalapeno soup at Food Lion the other day. I've never seen this before, so I thought that this would be the perfect recipe to give this a try in. I'm going to stir everything until it's combined really well, place this into the casserole dish, and the recipe didn't say to do this, but I added a little bit of shredded cheese. And then we're gonna top it with these seasoned tortilla strips. This is going to go into the preheated oven and bake for about 30 minutes until it's bubbly. Once it's there, I'm going to remove it and allow it to set for a couple minutes before we serve it. To go along with it, I'm just gonna cook up this old El Paso cheesy rice according to the package instructions, and then that's it. Here's the finished casserole and then the Mexican rice. And I actually cooked the rice in the microwave this time. It actually turned out well. Now for a quick side, I just cooked up a bag of steamable broccoli, added a pat of butter, salt, pepper, and a little bit of the Kinderies buttery steakhouse seasoning. All right, here is the finished plate. This was delicious, super easy, budget friendly. I recommend you all give this a try. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.